Hi, hello. So today we're going to be testing out these 5XL square tips from Enail Couture. These are supposed to be, I would imagine because of the 5XL, the longest full cover tips out right now. And I am so excited because you guys know I love me my long nails. We're gonna do that today. I'm gonna make them really extra. I'm gonna just kind of go all out. I will also compare these to some of my longer full cover nail tips for those of you that are curious. So yeah, let's get into it. So as y'all probably can see, my crusty dusty fingers, this hand already has my base gel on it. And today I'm actually gonna show you guys how I do my protective base gel layer that I do to keep my nails on my fingers for the most part while I switch out so many different sets. Now my nails are always gonna be in rough condition while I'm doing so many videos and changing them all the time for my content. But that's totally fine with me, Olive. But I am going to show you what I do to help minimize the damage of taking on and off different sets. So I already have this hand on and this is my just a gel base coat. As you can see, I did break, break a nail, had a bad accident with a car door, tragic. Anyway, this is totally fine though to put stuff on. I didn't put the gel on my actual skin. You don't want to do that. I know a lot of you guys ask like, what am I putting on my nails before I'm doing my sets to keep them healthy? So I'm going to go do this, show you guys what I do and kind of go through about what I do when I take off my sets with this base layer. Alrighty, so first you're gonna wanna make sure you've pushed back and cleaned your cuticles and you don't have any dead skin on your nail walls. You're gonna wanna clean all of that. Then I lightly, lightly rough up my actual nail. And I use a buffing block because I like that it can like bend and sort of contour to my nail and I don't have to do too much like flat and it doesn't dig in too much to any one area. So just like that much, not a lot. So after I've roughed those up, I'm just going to take some rubbing alcohol and I'm going to wipe thoroughly my nails. This is like a lint little lint free piece of something. I forgot what it's called. And then this is basically what you'll have. So then I will go in with a dehydrator of some sort. This one is from Kira Sky. And then I just will put that all over each nail. And then I'm going to take a primer and I really try to be careful with the primer. You just wanna be really careful not to get it on your skin. I just put it on my nail, but making sure not to get too close to my cuticle and that will help keep your base coat adhered. So I like to use the Apre Extend Gel and this is a gel that is meant to stick to full cover tips and fill in that little gap area as well as, you're supposed to use this as your base gel as well. You could just use a base gel, but I like a colored one specifically because when I take off my nails, I usually file down as much as I can and then maybe soak them off depending on what I'm doing. But as you can see, since this gel is colored, once I file down to it and I hit that pink, I know to stop filing that. And then I can just leave that base on there and that will be my new base because this gel specifically is basically meant to be like, you know, a base and a builder and everything like that. Any other product will basically stick to it. They also come in like other colors. I bought just like the full six color set. So I had every color. Some people get concerned when they see this on my nails and they're like, oh, why is it so red? I mean, like I have sensitive skin in general. Basically, no matter what I do, my like fingertips are always gonna be a little red because I can barely like sleep on my arm without waking up and it being red. So I'm just going to then get my gel and this gel is pretty thick. And so I try to scrape a ton off, have about this much on the brush. Then I put it on here and do about two layers. You know, a lot of poly gels aren't able to be soaked off, you have to file them off. And I feel like for a while that was what was really, really harming my nails is because I was having to file off the poly gel on my real nail. And there was only like a thin base coat to protect it or, you know, soak off at the very, very end. So this is what I started doing. So I'd have this thicker coat so that once I filed down to it, I knew that I could stop filing. And then if I wanted to take this off, I could just soak it off and avoid any heavy filing of my natural nails. So I hope this is helpful. This works for me, especially if you know, if you just like to play around with your nails and you like to change them often, I definitely would recommend doing that and then working on just filing down to this and then doing your, you know, new set on top of it. One of these days I will show you guys where I file down to. And then, you know, if you file a little bit into it, I usually will just then just put another layer on top before I do my new set and it's done. Again, the biggest reason I do this is just to avoid the filing of my natural nail a lot, you know, and if I'm doing a new set every week and I'm wanting to prep my real natural nails every week, I'm basically having to file them a little bit 
every week. But if I put this base layer on and I keep this base layer on through say three sets, then I can avoid filing my natural nail those three times. And instead I just, you know, file this base layer and my natural nails stay untouched. Cure this now. So I am going to do a second thin coat and that's just preference. You can choose to only do one for sure. Because I am someone that does change my nails a lot, I do do this still when I do acrylic sometimes. Usually I just glue the tip right over top of it. I don't really have a problem with it sticking. And then I do my acrylic on top of it. And as long as you've buffed your gel layer, it should stick to it. I've never had a problem with that. Again, everyone's different though. Might not work for you, but it does work for me. And then for me, personally if I've put on my base coat really well and I've prepped really well this base coat it does not lift like I rarely 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 ever have my Apre base coat lift or like have a nail pop off that almost literally never happens so there is that and I'm going to just cure this one last time and now I'm just going to wipe these with rubbing alcohol to take off the sticky layer I haven't found that taking off like the sticky layer does anything <laughs> to negatively affect how well my nails stick. But then I have this and also I feel like a color is much prettier to look at than my natural nails because my natural nails are always gonna be crusty while I do so many sets. Again, that's fine with me. I'd rather have crusty nails and do videos than have like nice nails and no videos. Alrighty, so we have our 5XL. I'm just gonna say 5XL instead of like extra, 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 extra extra long. And we're gonna compare these to some of the other sizes that I have. So I'm gonna just take a one for comparison. So let's open these up, I'm so excited. Ooh, and these seem a bit thicker than normal as well. So here is a one. I feel like you could see it better on this blue background than the white. I'm gonna take out a one from the 3XL from A Prey. Granted, these are different shapes. And it looks like the Apray one is almost a tiny bit longer. Not much though, it looks like they're almost the same size. But once again, it's a little bit different. Stilettos usually are a little bit longer than a square would be. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna grab a different size though, because I usually don't even use that small size. So I'm gonna grab a seven because that's my most used <laughs> length. I use that for both my pointer and my ring finger. The shape of these though look really, really nice. Looks like a really, really big C curve. Also, these tips seem a bit stronger than normal. Like I'm trying to squish it and like it's not budging. It's actually kind of hurting instead to like pull on it. So these one seems a lot sturdier than some of the others from Enail Couture. Okay, there's a seven and here is a seven for the stilettos. So it looks like the 3XL from Prey is still longer than the 5XL from Enel Couture. I mean, each company is gonna have their own standard to like what's long, extra long and stuff like that. But I just wanted to show you guys for comparison because I assumed in my head that these would be longer, but they're not. Also, these ones seem fairly big. Like I said, I always use a seven on my ring finger and that's gonna be way too big for me. Like even here, I think they might be too big. So I'm just going to size these out to start off with since they seem to run a bit large. For my thumb, let's try a three. And I do have flatter nail beds. So ones that are super, super curved like this, I usually have to work a little bit to make them fit. Yeah, you can see like how much of a gap there is there. Personally, I always have to sort of file down the sidewalls here a bit to make it fit better since again, it is so curved. Like if I just put that on, it's sort of like pinches in my skin. And so I am going to have to do some customizing for these, but definitely I think this one will be a three, I think. I'm gonna try a four. But them running a bit big is good if you are someone that has some bigger nail beds and you have a hard time finding ones that fit. Or maybe this one, this will probably fit better. Okay, four. It looks like I'm gonna have to go one size up from what I normally do. This one is an 11. This is the smallest size in here. And it looks like this one will be the one. Ooh, I'm gonna have to do a lot of work with these because yeah, these are so tall. They're just not made for a nail type like me. You see that? Yikes. So we're gonna have to do a bit of customizing with these. And then I'm just going to take a file and I'm gonna go on the smoother side and basically to make them fit my nail better, I'm gonna just go straight back and forth like this because it's too tall for my nail. And so we want to shorten that a little bit. Out, 
Okay, so I have filed that down a lot. So as you can see, that'll fit my nail much better. Let me show you how it was before. This one is before I filed it, and this is after you can see I've made it substantially thinner and how much space there would be if I didn't file it all. So I'm gonna do that to all of these and then I will be right back. Okay, so now that I've done all that, once again, they're pretty curved. So I'm just going to squish out the bottom here a little bit to make it a little bit flatter and look at how much better that's gonna fit. It's not gonna be a perfect fit, but that's all right. I'm going to be using the Apre Gel X Prep. This is basically a primer that preps your nails so you don't have to actually physically etch them. It chemically etches them. So I'm just going to put that all where my natural nail is going to touch the tip. Give that a moment to dry. And then I'm gonna take just this clear gel, extend gel that is very messy. All right, and what you're gonna wanna do is, I know it's been a while since I've done this, so I'm more of like explaining a little bit more in depth than I usually do, is you're gonna wanna put it all where your natural nail will touch, and then you wanna put some extra on the bottom. If you have a good amount of space to fill, then you're gonna wanna put more gel at the bottom. And then I start by pushing it down here, and then go like this and hold it where I wanted to do that. Again, it doesn't fit perfect, never gonna fit perfect because these are made for much more curved nail beds. That's okay. So while it does this, you can stick it in your lamp if you have that. I'm gonna just cure it a little bit with this little flashlight. This just helps flash cure it so that when I put it in my lamp, it will not move. I just cure that basically until I know it's good on the nail and then I will fully put it in my lamp. And voila, there we have our nail, pretty good. So now let's do the rest. Once again, same drill prep. Prep, 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 prep. And then again, I'm gonna push it down towards my cuticle and then push it down this way. And then once it feels good on my nail, make sure it's straight. Once again, just gonna cure with this little flashlight. Alrighty, and we have the nails on. They actually look pretty good. Whoa, this one's crooked. <gasps> no, look how crooked that is. <gasps> do I care enough to fix it? Yeah, I do. I mean, like, I can't, I can't do that. Like, that one's supposed to be like <clears throat> Alrighty, all fixed. So just to make these mesh in on my nails a little better, I'm going to just file around the cuticle a little bit. Now that I've done around the cuticle, I'm just going to buff these ever so lightly just all around so that our gel polish doesn't have a problem sticking. All right, so here we have our nails. I'm gonna show you guys where my inspiration is gonna come from today. So while I was at the craft store getting stuff for my last video, I saw these and I was like, oh, and I just realized they're buttons. So I can easily chop off the little, you know, part where you'd usually put thread in on the back and just glue these to my nails. I found these ones. Look at how adorable these little daisies are. Absolutely love them. Actually, you know, I don't know if they're daisies. And then I just thought that these buttons were so cute. Like even though they have the holes, I think the design is just like so cute. And also just like these ones, these like hollow hearts, like just, I absolutely love them. And like, they're so easy. You can easily just chop off that little back piece and put it on. So if you're looking for big decals, if you're not interested in making your own, you know, you can totally just like try the button aisle at the craft store. Like so cute, so cheap too. Look, I have another mold shocker. These butterfly ones, really like these. So I might wanna do a butterfly today. I don't know, I'm going, gonna, I'm gonna go really chunky today. I've just been loving all the molds and everything we've been doing and I wanna stay on that. I wanna do something spring-ish today, I think. Okay, so I'm gonna start out with this white gel polish from McCart. And this white is pretty good coverage, so I'll only need to do one coat of it.
Okay, let's put these in the lamp. Look behind the scenes, my messy <laughs> desk. Let's just pretend though. Okay, so now that we have our white on, I'm actually going to put a matte top coat on because in one of my last ones, I don't remember which one I think, probably one of my last subscribe draw my nails videos, you guys were like, it's so much easier to draw on a matte surface than a shiny one. And you guys are probably totally right. So that's what we're gonna do to make it easier to do some free handing. I know, who am I? How's it gonna go? I don't know, hopefully well, but you never know what I'm doing, like freehanding. You guys know I can't draw to save my life. So it's really just a wait and see right now. And now we have a nice white surface to do some nail art on. Alrighty, I'm just gonna use this form as like a palette. And I have this little collection of nail gels from McCart. So for sure yellow and probably orange. Alrighty, so I'm just going to put some dots on here so we can see. Start it. Good, I finally have like a nice yellow. You guys know I'm always trying to like mix to get a yellow. Finally I have one. I got some more like fuller gel polish sets. Love this green, of course. I'm gonna use one of my favorite brushes from Eno Couture, but it's like so itty bitty tiny, I love it. And hopefully this is much easier to paint on as a matte surface and it's already seeming like that's the case. I honestly don't have a plan right now. I'm just kind of going with it. All right, we got a stripe. Okay, so I kind of have an idea. I don't know if it's fully going to work, but I think it is worth a try. Okay, do you guys see what I'm trying to do here? Like, I don't know if it's gonna look good or make any sense. But like, doesn't that seem right? That seems like the color it would be if this yellow like went over that. Okay, and then if blue, say, went over like this, it would make green. Okay, so here's how this nail looks. Do you guys see what I'm trying to do? I think it actually looks pretty good. I like, it makes sense to me. So yeah, that's exciting. Then we haven't used this purple yet. So the thing is with purple, purple is not like a primary color. So can't like mix it up too much with other colors because really all you're gonna get is mud. <laughs> but I think that it looks nice just like right at the tip here. Okay, so you guys can sort of see the vibe that's going on with this. I'm gonna do one more nail and then I have to take my dogs to the vet to get their allergy shots for the season. <laughs> All right, and then I accidentally bumped some pink on this one, so I'm just gonna roll with that. Okay, so now I'm just going to put a matte top coat on. I just finished this one. It's the next day. I had to like run to the vets to take my dogs. And so I just like quickly put a matte top coat all over everything I did yesterday because I did not want that stickiness or to get ruined. So I'm just gonna put this last matte top coat over this nail now. Alrighty, so I'm gonna give you guys a nice showing of what these look like now. Before I put the decals on, cause something tells me a lot of you probably like them as is and won't really like them once I put the decals on or you personally would not want the decals. So yeah, here's that. I think I wanna use these little happy flowers. I think they're really cute. I don't know, I just think they're so cute. I'm just gonna like try to take the little loop off. Hopefully it's easy. Oh no! So what happens is this little loop is to the face. Okay, so 
I think we can still make it work. Button surgery it is. And I mean, let's be honest, there's nothing that a little bit of nail glue cannot fix. So I'm gonna put that there and then I'm gonna put a little drop on the center. Okay, we're gonna let that one just dry and I'm gonna see if we can make it a little bit easier and just, just like cut it off like right away without even having to do all of that because that seems like a lot. Okay, we can just cut it off. We don't have to do the whole thing. But I am still gonna put a little drop of super glue on the back here to just make sure that it all stays together. I say super glue, I mean nail glue. I mean, so similar, but I just want it to stay together. I don't wanna just have the <laughs> thing on the back. So I'm just going to do that to um, all of them now. Okay, see, won't that be so cute? I think it will be. So I'm just going to take my McCart rhinestone glue. I'm just gonna put a little dollop of that there and stick it on in. And then I am going to just fill in the gaps a tiny bit underneath. And then I am taking a file and filing off like that little bit of button that's still there. Again, I know that these like chunky sort of decals are not for everyone, but you guys know I just like love to have fun with my nails and having these big charms on here makes me happy. So that's what I'm gonna do. Also, while we're on the topic of like chunky decals and nails and stuff, I wanna just give a shout out to Femi Beauty. If you love chunky decals and stuff like that, she has been doing this kind of thing for as long as I can remember. So definitely check her out if for some reason you haven't already, cause she does chunky, cute designs like this all the time. Okay, honestly, I love how extra these are. Aren't they so cute? I love these little flowers, but we're not done. That's right, we're gonna make a ring. So why not? Will I even be able to fit it over these? I don't know. Let's just do a little, ooh, this one's liquidy. I think this is a, like an old, old one. That's probably why, but like, whoa, this is turning into a mess. Okay, oh, it's moving. Oh, okay. So not fully cured, that's fine. We just gotta get it off and that way we can hold it and cure. Ooh, yikes. Okay, I'm gonna just set this into bake. Okay, let's get all the stickiness off of this because it is very sticky. <laughs> now it's time to file. And then we didn't use this purple flower, so we'll use this purple flower on the ring. Okay, so ignore my neighbor mowing their lawn, but we are almost done. I'm gonna put a glob of this here, put our little charm. Perfect, so cute. Alrighty, and then look at a little ring to go with it. How cute is that? But I will show you guys the outside shots now. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure to give this a like if you liked these nails or you just enjoyed the video. It helps me out a lot and I really appreciate it, but if not, that's okay too. And I will hopefully see you next time. Bye.